Uh, I'm Paul Marty, professor from the School of Information. Delighted to be your MC for this lecture series. We have a really great talk today. Uh, many thanks to the Office of Research, the Office of Faculty Development and Advancement, and the University Libraries for all their help sponsoring this event. We could not do this lecture series without them. Um, absolutely spectacular. Uh, and now without further ado, I'd like to invite Professor Zhou he from the School of Information to come up and introduce our speaker. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Zhou He. I'm currently a social professor from School of Information from College of Communication Information. Today, I'm really honored and happy to be able to introduce you the first speaker of today's uh, lecture series in this academic year. Um, today, our distinguished uh, speaker is Dr. Jin Wang, Dean and Professor from College of Nursing. Uh, we couldn't be happier to have Dr. Wang to be able to kick off this event for us this fall. Recently, we learned from President McCullough that FSU's funding of like research expenditure will exceed over four million, four hundred million dollars this year, and this wouldn't be possible without Dr. Dean's effort in creating an excellent research environment and also bringing top talents to our campus. I'm so happy and excited to be able to work with her to advance clinical and translator research here at FSU campus. Today, Dr. Dean Wang is going to talk about digital precision health enabled by smart and connect care. And without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Wang, please. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you for having me here today. Um, thank you for the very um, kind introduction. First, really want to acknowledge this great lecture series, and thank you for inviting me. I don't know how much Frankie or those in the committee <laughs> that have decided on uh, inviting me here, but it's a great honor to be here and talking to a very interdisciplinary audience about what we're doing. Um, uh, first, I want to start, uh, what is precision health? Uh, it's a buzzword in healthcare and medicine. There's a lot of terms in precision medicine is very biomedical, that people don't get a good idea about exactly what it is, and different people who are working in the field of precision medicine or precision health will have totally different topics. <laughs> Just so you know, those who are working in the genetics and genomics field will feel like their field is entirely precision medicine, and those who are working uh, in the area of entirely digital health that has nothing to do with genes and genomics or other omics also feel like they are precision health. So we'll talk about what it is. But the definition from the CDC is it's really about improving health for each and all of us. And our genes and behaviors like what we eat, how we drink, uh, how we sleep, and the environment that we live in uh, really really impact all of our health. A lot of times people feel like, okay, I got this gene, I will have this disease by the age of 50 anyway. So it doesn't matter what I do. But that's actually not true. Um, so uh, I think there has been research evidence suggesting that a lot of the chronic disease, 60 or 70% of those disease can be prevented or delay the onset of those diseases, including many of the famous ones, you know, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, and all of it. So really, it's about the goal of precision health or medicine is to really protect your health by measuring these factors and how we act on them. And my definition for digital precision health, which where I think Florida State University and College of Nursing uh, especially can take a leading role is how can we leverage digital health technologies to measure and act on these factors that will tailor on these interventions and accurately predicting an individual response through a multi-omics, meaning it's not just the genes, it may be some uh, metabolism through your body on how you behave, how your lifestyle look like will change uh, your response to certain things. Certain people eat certain type of foods may respond differently. You may lose weight while others may gain weight. So this is what I'm trying to talk about. We're gonna use digital and biomarkers or digital biomarkers to really look at how we can provide individualized and what we call precise care for patients. So really the past of nursing and healthcare, uh, and Florence Nightingale really represents nursing, is the lady is called the lady was the lamp. So what what are nurses do? At, in the olden times, you'll see a nurse using a lamp to observe what patients are doing. Basically, when they are uh, sleeping or when they are at a hospital bed, um, 
So it's all through observation and getting pattern of data documented, and then see how can we individualize the care for that patient. And and the, that nursing intelligence is entirely based on knowledge we train our nurses and also based on the data nurses collect. So nowadays, what what are we taught? What am I talking about? Smart and connected health is there are many, many tools uh, in the whole history of health. You can see all of these devices that were developed to help nurses to collect data, collect blood pressure, uh, getting their heart rate data, getting the body temperature and everything. But they don't really talk to each other. They're all standalone devices nurses use and nurses just try to process all of this information and use the knowledge that they have learned to deliver this care. But nowadays, where uh, how my research has involved, this picture can tell you all about my research, is that as um, you know, the modern society that we have more technologies, when I was a PhD student, we were studying those people who are using a, a paper diary to really record what they are eating, what's the, how to calculate the calories and fat and carbohydrate from their food. And I'm studying how to help patients lose weight and um, how to help diabetes patients uh, maintain a good control of blood glucose levels. And I started as an undergraduate nurse where I went to those seniors' homes in the communities and they will tell me, well, I'm not taking this medication. And we all know that uh, you can easily control hypertension if you just take the medication. So I, I developed this research question in my head about, um, well, if I can just get people to be compliant at the time or nowadays more called adherent to the medication regimen, then they'll get better. And, and that was when I entered the PhD program, that's what I wanted to do. But I ended up being in University of Pittsburgh where it has the largest uh, study leading the multi-site uh, clinical trial leading the nation studies on diabetes prevention program, what they call look ahead study for diabetes, is really looking at actually by adopting or by giving patients a very intensive behavioral lifestyle intervention meaning how can we use some behavioral strategies to help people eating healthier and adopting or being more compliant or adherent to a low-calorie, low-fat food and more exercise can actually do better than, than giving them a pill or uh, taking a medication called metformin. And this can also help them lose weight, can prevent or delay the onset of type 2 diabetes for those patients. And I happen to be in the area that the behavioral strategy that I focused on for my dissertation is called self-monitoring. And that will explain to you why I'm in the technology field. At the time before we even have smartphones, I was focusing on how can we use paper diaries. And what we find out is that People who actually monitor more on a daily basis, they're more likely to lose weight. So it's one of the most effective behavioral strategies out there. And the theory behind all of these, in, uh, these interventions are that diet and exercise are learned behaviors, as you, you, you don't just know it when you were born. They're learned behaviors, so th they can be unlearned, unlearned in a way. So what are some of the behavior strategies that we can um, help people? And my research is focused on if you give people tools to help them monitor, and if you can get them keep monitor, they're going to change their behavior. And my research, and for those of you who don't know what's personal digital assistant at the time, don't ask me how old that is. Um, we transition from paper diaries to a personal digital assistant, similar to apps nowadays where you monitor diet and exercise and calculate calories and fat and carbohydrates of the food and how you exercise can balance your weight loss and get your goals met. And my dissertation is focused on when we randomize people to really using this personal digital system for monitoring of different things, not just one thing, both diet and exercise versus that give them individualized feedback based on their monitor data. Which one would work better? And how? Uh, what are some of the strategies and problem-solving skills we can teach them 
So from then on, I really every time there's a technology change for self monitoring, I have to keep up. And、uh, because of my core、uh, focus on self monitoring, we have moved from just standalone smartphone or apps to connected devices. Where there may be a wireless weigh scale, a Bluetooth or wireless enabled weigh scale, glucometers, blood pressure monitors that we can enable the data and for those data to go to both the patient so that they can have that regulating their behavior based on their self monitoring data. Also, the digital platform provide us the opportunity for healthcare providers. In my case, it's diabetes nurses or di、uh, dietitians who can leverage this data to better deliver their care. And for those of you、uh, who are not in the healthcare field, normally for a diabetes education visit for a new patient, sometimes it takes the entire visit, thirty or forty-five minutes of time, to just ask the patients, "What did you eat?" Dietary recall, and that entire visit would be spent on just getting to know what are you eating, and that is too much. And we really nurses don't have time to even do the individualized education when a dietary recall will take that long. So I started the、um, study about connecting this data because they're digital at the time,、uh, and. Really connect them into a connected platform to、um, what's、uh, currently used nationally by the American Diabetes Association or American Association of Diabetes Educators at the time, where the it's a specialty version of electronic health record. For those of you who more know the EHR, for everyone we use in the hospital, there are specialty ones where. We can leverage this data to tailor the care. So within one or two minutes, that's through our study that、uh, we have led, funded by the Robert Johnson Foundation, is that within two minutes they can not only get an idea about what patients are eating for one day, but over the past three months. So that have saved the entire visit time to be focused on more on education and behavior change、um, strategies a nurse or that a dietitian can be using. And later, because of the Technology. Some patients are like, I don't want to be monitoring this much.、Uh, I don't want to wear a wa Apple Watch, or I, I don't like to be tested this much. So that we also started research about maybe we can also study patients by putting everything on them. Well, in the meantime, by putting some environmental sensors in their home, so we get all of the data we can learn. Maybe、um, some of the data that we can collect from the environment where people don't have to wear anything by watching and comparing using some of artificial intelligence or machine learning to learn the patterns that can help us understand based on different people's preference. Maybe they can.、Um, They don't want to wear, then that's fine. Maybe some of the things that we put in your sofa or we put on your fl floor that that can help us tell you what your blood pressure may be changing, or、um, some of the sensors we put in their refrigerators or medicine cabinet can help us get those information more accurately to predict them. So that's why we have also looking into putting those、um, environmental sensors in patient homes. When there are all this technology on smart home, we were trying to move into the field about what about a smart health home, not just smart home for all the electronics you have that are smart devices, but also what are for the health devices, and also looking to when there are too many apps, too many devices, how can we all Put them all in one place and simplify them for both the patients and nurses. And that that's in a nutshell was all of the research that I have done over the past fifteen、uh, or seventeen years、um, was looking at the different things. And when we also talk about connected technology,、um, there are things that where you sometimes you don't need a sensor based on even how the Wi-Fi signals or your Wi-Fi.、Um, Devices work in your home. There can also be considered as a sensor that can tell us what are your behaviors. And here are some of the examples where、um, how we can monitor、uh, our patients with the different sensors throughout their body and in the environment. How can we connect them to the healthcare space? And if you're looking at one patient using a diabetes patient as an example.、Um, There are a lot of ways where we can leverage. Right now, it's a hot topic on machine learning or AI. But、uh, 
is overall, there are many, many opportunities where we are tracking a patient at different angle. You can talk about remote monitoring. It can be a social media platform. It can be a social media forum, social support group, telehealth appointments, medication refill data, food logging. All of this are all around one patient when we talk about connected health. But how can we move it toward when there are too much data sometimes, and for those of you who work in the healthcare, uh, there, there's going to be a fatigue. For too many alarms, too many data, how can we process this? So that kind of leads to the ne next research questions that we are having, that how can we really tailor to the individual needs, leverage some of this sensor data, leveraging AI to provide exactly at the right time with the right amount of information to the patients and also to their providers. I want to acknowledge some of the centers that I've built in my previous institutions that uh, are keep going strong with some of the collaborators that I have in a different mobile connected, smart connected health centers and currently here uh, at Florida State University and also some of the precision medicine and engineering collaborators that I have over the next few uh, over the past uh, 15 years that I'll be talking about collectively our research. So this is a, a typical study that I do is that, um, well, this study is focused on both patients who are overweight or obese, have type 2 diabetes or kidney disease. We have a layer approach um, by looking at different patients by giving them different devices. But this particular study is we normally have different monitoring devices, and we have one all in one platform that will take all of this data. And here you will see the different kinds of data of each device, or one device can provide different data that we want the patients to monitor. And we will set goals for how they should um, bring those uh, data points to. And we also have a uh, all layered platform where they can see all of this data um, and giving patient a better idea about how their different monitor diet or exercise elements may impact the outcomes such as weight or blood glucose that we're looking at. And this particular study also is looking at a um, interesting diet. Typically people would think that you need to eat lower calorie, lower fat in order to lose weight. And there's this more, um, interesting findings about a ketogenic diet can, may also help certain patients. And this is a very high fat, kind of healthy fat kind of diet may really help patients losing weight and control their diabetes as well. So we add a ketone meter in looking at how can we make sure that a patient, when they think that they're on a ketogenic diet, in reality, you may not be uh, in a way to help patients. And another study that I want to talk about with what, what is from a precision um, diet perspective is for those who have hypertension, that there is a low sodium or low salt diet that you should be uh, more focused on. And there are different like biomarkers or genes that in your body that will make you more responsive to uh, in this concept called saw sensitivity. So you are more likely to respond to a low sodium diet than others. And that's why certain people will be frustrated that you have asked me to take uh, less salt and I did that, but why is still not helping with my blood pressure? And that because that you, you may have different genes or um, your response for these low salt diet or low sodium diet is different than others. And how can we really help problem solve with those patients uh, by looking at more from a precision medicine perspective on your response is different. And this particular study is looking at how can we use the digital monitoring of both the diet and the sodium level in your diet and also blood pressure at your home to help you understand. And by giving you the information on your genes and your metabolites, we can tell you what you are prone to and what your response is more likely based on the digital data. Um, because sometimes people will tell you, I, I did it, but in reality, they may not. So uh, that's how we, we think using a digital approach can really help in the field of precision health and medicine. 
And basically, this is how we are looking at how we can really personalize the dietary advice a nurse or a dietitian or a community health worker can really help us look into it. So these are the typical intervention that we do. No matter is hypertension, diabetes,、uh, kidney disease, we normally set a personalized diet and exercise goal for patients based on the things that we ask and monitor. And we have either a real nurse or a real. Interventionist, or we have digital lessons that we have developed that、uh, for different people who can access this information differently. We ask them to monitor. We provide real-time data analytics, and this can be enhanced by AI or other、uh, machine learning alg algorithms to provide personalized feedback.、Um, so that's kind of where we see、um, using these connected technologies. And the trending about this level of digital precision health is really leveraging some of the predictive models to really derive some data-driven recommendations and providing these personalized feedback.、Um, and a, a kind of further area after personalized feedback, because a nurse can look at the data and comprehend it and develop a personalized data. But we're trying to see how can we leverage some of the machine learning, and this is a, a relatively kind of newer concept that we are deploying in these kind of research, knowing that all of our research project collected. A lot of the different kind of monitor data with patients' diet and exercise, their weight, their blood glucose throughout the day, and we're trying to utilizing this digital twin approach、uh, that we borrow the concept from and、uh, mechanical engineering or、uh, di different areas that by looking at how can we, when we collect all of this information, train these models and.、Um, Learn from all of these models and develop a twin, basically a digital twin of yourself. By learning about you, and then I have a digital twin that we may tweak different things in the person, and then in order to give you a feedback on how you can better modify your behavior if this is your goal, and your twin can tell you these are the different approach that you may want to adopt if that's truly what you would like to get to your goals. And this is one of the project based on that ketogenic diet study. With all the data we have collected, we actually use a a concept where、uh, where all of the data we、uh, captured, we kind of train the data and we retrain the data with the newly weekly data that we're getting, and then we put it toward an online control system where you know when they produce this,、um, they try to automate some of the.、Um, Mechanic、uh, producing different products reduce errors. So basically, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get all of this patient data that they monitor from the digital or remote monitoring devices, and through this optimization, see what are kind of the personalized feedback, what are the predictions that can optimize the best outcome for the patients. Because we also monitor their weight and glucose, so we know how what will be the best way. And this is the kind of the most recent study that we're doing. What I call Nursing the loop, and for those of you who are more from the engineering, it's a concept called ex expert in the loop. And in this case, the expert is a nurse's brain.、Um, nurse in the loop, artificial intelligence for precision management of type two diabetes in a clinical trial that we use transfer learning predicted digital twin approach that I talked to you about. So how basically the steps are really simple. Basically, we're building the digital twin. We're trying to build your twin based on your data that are feeding to us every week.、Um, that through all of the devices or all of the data, and in the future we can do more blood or urine、um, biomarker that or or other things we'll talk about in the future. But here is what we have, and this is the concept. And then while we build this, we build different models. Here are. Some of the、uh, AI model we use, artificial neural network. One one of the kind of the AI models that we look at, with or without transfer learning, and look at how those models look like for the different diet. And then we set up the control model, the algorithms that I've shown you, where we try to put more the nurse in the loop. At one point, we give them parameters, and we give them the predictions for next day. Um, and we also give the this is where the nurse in the loop, extra in the loop AI, which is more what I call high tech, high touch, is that they're 
there is more parameters and if you have a human involved in actually developing those artificial intelligence algorithms with the, uh, putting those nurse assigned scores in the algorithm to really fine tuning the parameters for optimization. And uh, when we set up those control model, the twin model based on their carbohydrate intake, fat intake, fiber, protein intake, and we really look at, we evaluate how this model looks. Uh, we look at their weight and blood glucose at three months and six months, and also look at, well, by the end of six months, are they even still doing the monitoring? Because we know monitoring works, but it's too much for a lot of people. So uh, in this study, some of the preliminary findings that we have found is that if they're not in an AI group, basically the people who are monitoring significantly job by the end of the uh, six months where the people with the AI supported on uh, the nursing the loop AI are uh, more still sustaining their monitoring which is predictive of better outcome for their weight and exercise. And moving forward is that, well, still, it's a lot of information for a patient, especially for a senior patient. So how can we leverage some of the audio and radio sensing system where a lot of people have at their home, like an Amazon Echo or things, where we can use a chatbot uh, to really synthesize this information that we can learn from the patients that can be delivered back to them or back to their caregivers. So for those who have cognitive impairment or may not be able to comprehend this information. So this study that we are running currently here at Florida State University uh, and trying to uh, similar patterns, we use Fitbit Watch wireless router, but in this case, we have introduced Amazon Echo in a way to see how we can put these things in a senior home and look at how can we better predict um, some of the patient behaviors while they're at home. And this is basically what we are adding through some of the attracting some of the data that we can do and classifying all of these results, how can we get to this interactive communication based on the information that we have. And another application of this is using a community health worker model that um, not only addressing some of those devices that we can get from the data, but also looking into looping in a community health worker that really can address what are some of the social factors, what are happening in the communities that are really impacting these patients that we may not be able to understand completely from just by looking at the data from a clinician or nurse perspective. And another further area that we are gonna look into is what's called a digital biomarker. Normally you look at a biomarker, meaning something from your body, from your urine or from your blood, but uh, really there has been this uh, newer concept about the biomarker of the future is going to be digital. So you'll be able to use more uh, objective and quantitative data to really predict some of the data that previously you have to get from your blood and urine. And here are some of the collaborations that researcher from College of Nursing is really collaborating is something called e-tattoo, so maybe like a patch where we can put in your body and you will be able to get a lot of information and through some of the AI or deep learning can um, get information from these sensor data through the different layers that you can find from an e-tattoo or a patch uh, to the skin or, or to your head or um, that we can get some of this information versus you have to monitor a lot of the things that I have talked about in my research. And also using some of the brain imaging, we'll talk about the different centers we have in the College of Nursing that have more the expertise about what well, we, we can measure some of the brain activity by detecting some of the changes associated with blood flow and how those imaging can be leveraged to um, through AI or machine learning to derive results that can help us to learn about people or patients' response um, on the different health conditions. Also moving forward, I want to talk a little bit about Institute on Digital Health and Innovation that is led by some of our new hires. Um, by some of the connected health piece is also about social media and some of the connected health forums. Um, there can be a nurse or community health worker or any other professional can monitor this health forum. It can be standalone or assisted with a peer coach or a facilitator who may be from that particular group. And some of the things that you know our researchers are doing are using avatars, agents, and chatbots 
to, and these are some of the examples where our researchers are doing is moving to the digital precision space is not just the individual information, but also the social interaction through these forums. And what's next, and there can be a text messaging based intervention, but how can we implement all of this evidence into large social media forums to be able to really support some of the behavior change that is needed for our society and the, our public. And some of the places is you can go from small to really big to Facebook, um, X, or uh, different um, snapshots, different things that where we can do um, to really look at all the different connected health forums. Another piece where I'm not going to talk about is really robots with the sort of the next or the future of smart or connected care. You may have a pet that is a robot, but can do some of what we talk about, what we do with the Amazon Echo or things, you know, that is still a cold thing for a lot of our seniors. Maybe if the voice is from a pet robot that can comprehend some of the information that we collect from home, that would really help our, you know, different people who have different preferences, who, who prefer to talk to pet or prefer to talk to a caregiver or family member, having this information that we can, through some of the nursing knowledge embedded um, in it. Um, another resource I want to talk about with what we are doing is we have uh, finally launch this digital health at .fsu.edu with a platform because all of my research require connection of all of these mobile wearable devices. Can't do any study without them. So that's a core infrastructure that we have brought into FSU where it's a platform anyone can use and it can be connected through majority of the devices out there and ha can be connected to a text messaging platform where you can deliver text messages to your patient with personal feedback. And here are the different features. You can also embed interactive digital lessons, text messaging, the connected platform for different purpose for health, wellness, research studies, or just general for yourself. Um, another areas of connected health that I'm going to quickly go over is majority of this healthcare spendings are spent on patients with multiple conditions, not just one. Um, when you get older, you may not just get one condition. And when you try to adopt a healthy lifestyle, you cannot just focus on your diet. When you focus on your diet, you, may, you cannot just focus on fat or calorie. There are always multiple things. And when there are multiple things, and we need to focus on how can we better uh, deliver care with people who have multiple conditions. And some of the things we also talk about for those who are older, aging, and caregiver research is intervention really need to look at beyond the individuals. What are some of the other levels, social and other things? So that's talk about when we talk about connected health, there are different layer of things that we need to look at. So how can we know uh, it cannot be just one component of the intervention? So uh, the next kind of set of research question is, we don't know which component is making positive a contribution to what parameter. And so what when we look at the future in partnering with a lot of engineering, there are a lot of new clinical trials leveraging how can we optimize strategies within a multi-component intervention and, and really optimize how we can better tailor and individual lies these precise interventions leveraging the digital and the biomarker data to um, optimize what's best for the patients. And here's really what I think is the future of clinical trial may not be everyone or who assigned into certain groups are getting the, exactly the same for, for all. Maybe the future is an N of one trial, like every individual is one group in the trial and how can we better tailor for those who are responding to certain intervention Yes or no, they're adherent or not, we have different strategies to really provide to help them. And another area where I think, you know, where the future of health and health lies the, uh, in the digital precision health and smart and connected health is we learn a lot about over the past few years, advanced care at home and hospital at home. How can we better leverage the technology to really bring us both in home settings and clinical care settings 
we can really bring all of this information. When you go to a clinic, you don't have to answer your physician, your nurse, or the assistant asking the same question all the time, not knowing exactly what you have been doing over the past three months. But they will have everything and they will look at you because they only take them a few seconds to understand how you have been doing and be able to provide you uh, better care. And where I think FSU can really leading in this area is by having an incubator for AI applications for aging in place and have some of the uh, attract uh, a lot of the industry partners, and but also how we really look at some of the workforce development. I see my uh, team there uh, who have been really uh, working hard in how can we uh, revamp our curriculum, how can we be at the forefront in a lot of the care that we deliver. So next, I want to highlight a few centers where how we are going to do it. And we're going to leverage a lot of the intelligent biomarker that we talk about in our brain science and symptom management center. Nurses care about how patients feel and their pain, their different symptoms. And that are non-invasive home-based approach with brain stimulation and a lot of other things that we can do in getting that individualized care. We have the Institute on Digital Health and Innovation where um, that I also am part, part of and Lisa, the director is my boss for, for that. If you need to have access to the platform, you have to ask her. And also the Center on Population Sciences for Health Equity uh, which hosts the first program about how can we leverage some of these interventions in different populations, really uh, having a goal in providing health care for all. And also, lastly, the TMH Center for Evidence-Based Nursing Research and Practice and how we can translate a lot of this in collaborating with our hospital partners and community partners. Um, and a new uh, adventure for us that has not been approved yet that we are planning across the, semper, uh, the campus that I'll be leading, um, really so, uh, uh, trying to explore when we talk about this whole digital precision health that I just talked about, what are the, some of the strengths here in the College of Nursing, but also across campus uh, from all of the colleges that um, what will be a signature program at Florida State that we can be at the forefront based on what we have uh, to have a best-in-class interdisciplinary center focused on whole health. Um, you learn about my research, it's all about lifestyle. I gave up on medication, not really. I still want patients to take their medication, but I really find that by supporting patients with a healthy lifestyle can do better. And how can we get there leveraging the digital health and the biomarker research and how understanding how their body responds differently to these interventions. We are in the process of buying a clinic that will make us the only uh, one in the nation that will own an academic-based lifestyle medicine clinic. And we have nurse practitioners practicing lifestyle medicine. And we have one of the only two programs in the nation in our doctoring nursing programs in lifestyle medicine. And this can be interdisciplinary across different colleges as well. But when we talk about academic health sciences, it's really about the integration about both the practice, uh, how we deliver care, how we train our next generation. But also, how do we translate from our uh, research and evidence on precision health and what I call digital precision health into the practice? And that's also what, what beautiful is why I'm taking on this temporary role in leading the clinical and translational science with the College of Medicine is where I really feel like we need to be able to deliver and translate all of the research into the care, into the education to train our next generation. So this is where I see um, in a precision lifestyle medicine, we can incorporate all kinds of different lifestyle interventions. We have people focus on different diets, meditation, different exercise intervention across campus. There is precision public health, all of the things that we can really learn and not to just say people feel good about it, but what is the science behind that we can actually improve and tell exactly how everyone responds differently to, to really add hardcore science. Normally when it goes to whole health, people will think, well, it's complementary medicine, um, pseudoscience. So I think what we can differentiate us from the rest is that we are gonna use hardcore science using digital and precision health concept to really look at how these are actually make a difference. I listed some of the different uh, colleges and different majors that really from art therapy, music therapy, social work, to public health, nutrition, exercise, 
to, of course, communication, science, health, information, technology, even to law, entrepreneurship, medicine, uh, business, uh, a lot of the areas that I may not even know at this point about across campus, how can we leverage what we are best strong at in the lifestyle space um, to really uh, using the science or the scientific approach that I have talked about, um, you know, throughout my um, talk on how we can bring everything together to say we are the best in studying using these precision or uh, digital precision health approach in looking at different lifestyle interventions that can improve health through science. So with that, I'm going to end my talk. I know it's a little bit over, but I can be uh, reached in my email. And I really want to thank uh, all of you uh, for coming and listening. And I look forward to see what where we can go from here. I'm very hopeful with everyone here because you are all the people who are doing the hard work. Thank you.